receive the first uh, image from the Hubble telescope. And you can tell that this is basically the same style of image. And what they did was they took a picture of this really dark spot in the sky, just this tiny little speck. And they didn't really expect to find anything. And this is basically what they got back after they watched with the Hubble telescope. Um, eventually they redid this and they did the Hubble Ultra Deep Field, which is better quality. I believe actually this might be the first one. And then I think this one might be the second. No, that's the first one. This is the second one. Um, the Ultra Deep Field. So they did it again, but they did a longer exposure, if I remember correctly. And it allowed you to see even more. So NASA pretty much announced um, their latest, obviously. They're going to have five more targets that they're going to go through with Webb's uh, targets. And you'll see these basically tomorrow, uh, July 12th. I don't know if they're going to do all 12. I think they are, but these are the first ones that they're going to go through, show through. And I kind of wanted to talk a little bit about what this actually is or what's so significant about it. And it's like, well, why do you care so much about a telescope? Um, if you don't know anything about space and how space works or how telescopes work, um, the James Webb Telescope is a big monster. Um, what it does is basically look with a infrared spectrum and it's pretty much we can see visible light with our eyes and we can't realistically see infrared. So when you're looking at stuff in space, there's a lot of debris. There's a lot of space like dust. And you can see this in this image here. Um, and then you have the visible spectrum and then you have the infrared spectrum. So you can kind of see how there's some things that are basically observable that's behind that layer of dust. So you can actually see further and you can actually see that spectrum of light that is invisible normally. So if there's something in the way, like where the Hubble is, we just couldn't see it. Now we can actually see more. Um, the biggest thing about the James Webb, obviously, is it's bigger. It's much bigger. And it's going to give you way more detail. So this is a scaled image. Um, if you guys kind of want to basically look at what the size of the uh, <laughs> James Webb telescope is. The Hubble mirror, the primary mirror, uh, is on the left side there. This, even though my head is in the way, that is the entire like array of the James Webb telescope. Now, each of these mirrors can move if I remember correctly, and they can adjust. And that's why you kind of have that weird star pattern that you see in this uh, image here, like where it's like that. Um, it's basically because of the shape of the mirrors. But that's how big it is. It is absolutely massive. So when you're talking about like upgrades, yeah, that's a pretty big upgrade, uh, which will allow us to even see further. And I don't think people kind of get how this works. So when you're in space and you're looking at something like from one point to another, it takes time for that light to travel because it takes such a long distance. Uh, it's kind of like looking back on time, I guess is the best way to explain it. So you could look at a star and you could see it and be like, well, yeah, that star, the light that's hitting me is billions and trillions of years old or however old it is. Um, and that star actually might not be there yet, but the light hasn't caught up to you. So we can technically kind of look further back and the bigger mirror you have, the bigger lens you have, basically, you can kind of look back further. Um, so you can see how big this thing is. This thing is actually massive. There's a couple people just chilling down here um, just to give you a comparison. Now, this doesn't actually have like the vehicle or like all the sun shield stuff that they have on there as well, too. It's a little bit more nerdy. Um, but this is kind of a good example of what it can see, at least what I found online. Um, obviously, you have the Big Bang behind my face here. You know, I'm kind of cute. But this is what we can see with certain stuff like modern universe, age, billions of years. That's the measurement they have here. Um, this is some of the deep field images, basically, I believe is what, they, what they're showcasing here. And then this is where the James Webb Telescope is. Basically, right before this era, you basically have the big explosion where everything, we're not entirely sure how everything happened. And then you have this period of time where stars and galaxies potentially just weren't there. Um, they weren't kind of, you know, there's just space debris or whoever fucking knows. Um, and it's, we're not sure what was there exactly. That's why obviously it's that. But we're looking kind of on that edge. So the James Webb is meant to look at like the very earliest creations as far as galaxies and stars go. Um, that's how far back we're trying to look with that telescope. And I don't think people kind of see that in that perspective. Like they're like, wait a minute, you're looking back at things. But um, the overall remarkable image is pretty nuts. Um, I believe I actually had a smaller image here. This is a test image they teased out, which I think is really funny to look at now. You can actually see some of the galaxies forming here. Um, very low resolution. Now this was a test image basically from like their like scope, like their sight to like kind of dial in where they want to aim. Um, so if you ever look at like a normal telescope, they have like the big telescope and they got the little one on top. It's like a smaller optic. That's basically what this was. And this is the final image that we got today from the actual full sensor. And it's absolutely nuts to think about. Um, how big this is. And I don't think people get the scale either. 